Hello, friends. So Benjamin's here. I'm back in Dublin <laughs> from my last story, which was in Connemara. And I'm here to do the last part of Aesop's Fables for little children. Now, you might remember Aesop uh, was a man who lived thousands of years ago, and he came up with these fables that people are still telling today. This version has been retold by Susanna Donaldson and illustrated by John Joven. So this is the book published by Usborne Press in 2020. And I've really been enjoying them so far. Later today, I'm gonna to be telling you what happens when Town Mouse goes to visit his country cousin. But we're gonna start with the fox and the stork. Fox was a trickster, no doubt about it. And what Fox loved most of all was to play tricks on his friends. Today, he decided it was Stork's turn, so he wrote a letter inviting Stork to supper. Stork was delighted to receive the invitation and spent all day getting ready, choosing the very best hat to wear. Storks love hats. By the time Stork set out, the wind was howling, the rain was pouring, but Stork didn't want to let Fox down. An hour later, a very soggy stork arrived at Fox's house. Come inside, said Fox. I've made us some soup. Fox poured the soup into wide, shallow bowls. Stork was so excited. It smelled wonderful. It's my best soup yet, said Fox, gulping it all down. <sighs> so tasty. Stork tried very hard to eat the soup with his long beak. He went all round the big wide bowl, trying to gobble it up. But it was impossible. Fox began to laugh. Ha, 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 ha! You've tricked me, cried Stork. You're supposed to be my friend. Stork strutted home through the rain. Oh, I'm going to get that fox. All night, Stork stayed awake, determined to come up with a plan. At last, he had it. I know exactly what I'm going to do. At once, Stork sat down and wrote Fox a letter inviting him to supper. Fox was delighted to receive the invitation. Stork is such an amazing cook. I can't wait. Fox hardly ate a mouthful all day so he would have plenty of room for his tummy in Stork's wonderful supper. Welcome, Fox! I've made stew, said Stork. I hope you like it. I can't wait, chuckled Fox. I'm famished. Stork poured the soup into long, tall jars. Fox did everything he could to eat the soup. He tried his best to get his snout, which was only short, into the long jar, but he just couldn't reach it. And no matter how much he tried, it was just impossible. As for Stork, how he laughed. <laughs> you tricked me, snapped the furious fox. You shouldn't play tricks on your friends. Well, said Stork, you tricked me first. Now you know how it feels. For the first time ever, Fox felt terrible about all the tricks he'd played on his friends. The next day he hurried to Stork's house. I'm so sorry, he said. I'll never play tricks on my friends again. Will you come to my house for lunch? So, that is the fox and the stork. Did you enjoy that? I definitely did. And now, like promised, we're gonna do the story of the town mouse and the country mouse. Town mouse loved town life. Every night he played with his band, Tan Mouse and the Rat-a-tat-tats. Isn't he swell? What likely? Town Mouse confessed to his friend. 
I've been feeling a little, uh, bored. What you need, said his friend, is a change of scene. Why not take a trip? Town Mouse decided to visit his cousin in the country. He set off the very next morning. Chugga, chugga, chugga went the train. Choo, choo! Town Mouse arrived as the light faded and the stars began to shine. Ah, he said, so peaceful and quiet. But then he stepped in a cow splat. Ah, oh, disgusting! And came face to face with a cow. Oh my! At last he arrived at his cousin's house. Surprise! He cried. Cousin, I've come to stay! Welcome! Country Mouse was overjoyed. Come inside, she said. We'll celebrate with the feast. Country Mouse laid out her best nuts and berries. Call this a feast? thought Town Mouse. The next morning, Town Mouse was woken early by a very loud cock a doo doo What a dreadful racket, thought Town Mouse. So much for peace and quiet. I know, said Country Mouse. We'll go for a picnic by the stream. You'll love it. But Town Mouse was not at all sure of the company. Ah, it's a monster! No, it's only a dragonfly. Nor did Town Mouse enjoy the swim. Ah, what is that slimy thing? That's just a frog. I can't take this any more, said Town Mouse. I have to go home. Why don't you come and stay with me in the town? Really? said Country Mouse. I'd love to. I've never been to town before. They set off that very night. Town Mouse took Country Mouse straight to the best restaurant in town. We'll feast on blue cheese, said Town Mouse. But Country Mouse missed her nuts and berries. After supper, Town Mouse sang with his band. <laughs> My poor ears, thought Country Mouse. It's so loud. In bed that night, Country Mouse couldn't sleep. Cars raced past the window. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And the blue cheese had given her tummy ache. I miss my home, said Country Mouse. I know it's simple, but it's just right for me. But there's so much more to see, cried Town Mouse. Do you really have to go? We're each better in our own homes, said Country Mouse. So Town Mouse took his cousin to the station and waved goodbye. Country Mouse walked home in the starry dark. She sniffed the cold, fresh air and smiled. Country Mouse, called her friend Hedgehog, how was your trip? Come to my house for berry tea, said Country Mouse, and I'll tell you all about it. Well, said Hedgehog. It was new and strange and exciting, said Country Mouse. But, oh, it's so good to be home. So, the moral of this story is, there's no place like home. So there we are. We've come to the end of Aesop's Fables for Little Children. I hope you enjoyed them. They're a lot of fun and I hope you learned something along the way. I hope you found in this delightful collection of six much loved fables, each tale charmingly illustrated by John Lovin is full of warmth and wit, the perfect introduction to Aesop for little children. That's right, there's a lot more Aesop. And if you enjoyed this, we may have them at our various branches. Why not come and find out? Well. I'm going to go and enjoy the sunshine now. So thank you for listening. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.